Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, I'm actually re-recording this right now because I already did it once and the microphone was not picked up very well. So I hope this recording is a lot better now. Alright, today we're going to look at Substance Painter and how to use Substance Painter to set up your Speculum maps in a, a way that you will get quite some decent Speculum maps out of it. So I'm actually going to show you some basics, how I go to or gone about actually making uh, a dirt and a wear map and a couple of nifty tricks uh, you should have on your sleeve and you should know about Substance Painter when it comes about to the procedural texturing part. So first of all, what I did uh, off camera basically is I set up some very basic materials. So as you can see here, uh, I have a bit of painted metal, some blank metal, some plastic rubber, and so on set up. It's one thing that is very important uh, every time, I have to repeat this also in Vertex Design every time because people keep forget it, um, is that on the very, very bottom of your layer stack should be a base layer. In my case, that's the Anaboga Red Metal. And it should have all um, channels enabled and dirt and wear should be black. You're probably wondering now, how the hell did you get this channel or these channels to show up? Uh, in the link in the description, I am going to link a Google Drive link, a download link to a zip file, which will contain some smart materials, some expert presets and a template. So if you click on new, you will have the Giant and Giants Engine 8 template, which is going to set up your project uh, in the way that you need it. There will be a couple more channels here, one called Color Select, one called Moss, and you can just delete them because you don't need them. Uh, just press the minus here and you can actually get rid of them. So back to the layer stack and the base layer. So why should this be there? This is because you need information on the very first layer and it should always be zero, so black. Because what might happen is if you just put in a material, it's automatically always set to white. So if you forget to actually enable your base layer and set everything to um, black, your white is actually white, uh, your dirt is actually white and your wear is actually white. So the textures you will get are completely off. So first things first, make a base layer, make everything black and have every channel enabled so that you have at least some information in the base layer. Then, as I said, I just went through and added some basic stuff, like some basic material setup. Um, and one tip I can already give you when baking the AO, as you can see here, try to uh, use your screws or hoses as a high poly mesh. For example, if you do it in uh, Blender or Substance Painter or Marmoset, uh, because you get some very nice amid occlusion detail. You can see it here or even better uh, down below here. And this will actually help you later on if you, for example, make a dirt map, which we're going to do now. So first of all, let's start with dirt. So there's a couple of different ways how to actually start with it, but First and foremost, what I usually do is I make a folder, which I will call just base dirt. And then I'll throw in a material. And I just disable everything that I don't need, which is in my case, I don't need any height and I don't need any wear, but the dirt should be one. The roughness can be somewhat here. And then let's just take some rough. Oh, let's see, can we get a good yeah, something about that. It doesn't really matter because it's just for us. So it's just visible for us. So we call this dirt layer. And then we add a black mask. And then I can already tell you something that throws off people very frequently. If I now enable or if I just now add a paint layer and I'll paint on that. So let me just paint one here. You can see that it indeed does paint on it. But if I click on that layer itself, 
it also paints. So it might just be that sometimes you're painting stuff and it doesn't refresh. So if I example now want to get rid of this, uh, I could actually just add a paint layer. But sometimes I can just delete this and I'm wondering, wait, why is there still information? Well, that's because with just a paint layer, it basically works as an alpha mask. So everything is empty, but only when you paint, information is actually painted in. So be aware of that because it can throw you off. What I suggest if you want to avoid it is that your very, very first layer, um, if you do a mask, so black mask is always a fill layer and that fill layer is always black because then whatever happens, whatever you paint in this space, it doesn't matter. It will not be shown because the fill is actually overwriting that. If you want to see the mask itself, like the black and white I just had, just hold Alt, like left Alt, and click on that mask and you will get into this screen. So, all right. So that's basically uh, the very basic setup because now you can actually start procedurally texturing it. And depending on how you want to do it, um, there's a couple of different ways. But I usually start to uh, or start by adding some very basic um, procedural stuff on it. There are some uh, generators you can use. So if you, for example, look for the dirt one, it's one that you can use. It's it's not too bad, but you can see it's quite far off. There is also a couple ones uh, called smart material or smart masks. Um, for example, there's one called dirt ground, which is okay as a start, as I said. Um, you have some, uh, where is it, if I click on this, you have some stuff you can adjust, but you can see for some reason on this dirt layer, it also, everything that's an edge is also dirty for some reason, which doesn't really make sense. So what I usually do is I like to do it by hand, which means is that I will build up my own masks. Um, there are some smart materials and smart masks supplied in the zip file I link below, but I want to show you how to do it yourself. So the first thing that I want to add is something called um, an ambient occlusion. So we do a fill layer and we can actually, oh no, sorry, not a fill layer, we look for a generator. That generator is also called ambient occlusion. So it's this one. And I want the ambient occlusion because if you think about everything where there's a nook and cranny, it should be filled with um, dirt, right? So I will just work on the balance. You can see that the mask is inverted, but uh, that's not a big deal. I can just click on global invert and I can just invert it right, like that. Right, and now since we have the dirt map or the ambient occlusion here, um, I will actually just adjust it a tiny bit. I will not go into like great detail because I actually already finished doing this once in the run I had earlier. So I'm just going to very quickly make that happen. So now I want to actually uh, add some fill layers uh, where I will add some uh, textures that I have. So there's a couple of procedural textures. So let's just look for, um, interestingly, if you look for one called concrete, that's a good one to use because it has quite some, uh, let's call it, um, it's got some very nice structure to it that will also translate well into the dirt map. So let's add another fill layer and let's actually get another concrete one. So uh, let's get let's this one. And you can already see something if I click in between the layers. It's there overriding. So that is because similar to how in Photoshop, uh, they're not mixing yet because they're set to normal. Uh, you can set them to multiply, which basically evens them out or uh, eradicates them out or multiplies them out. Or if you want to add them, you can use the linear dodge, which is just an add by itself. 
So now we'll just play around a bit more with the values or something like this. Or this as well. Something like this. So it's pretty dirty right now. And I would like very much to have some dirt from beneath. So everything that's facing us right now should be dirty. And I can do this with a generator called uh, World Position. Or world space normals not world position and what this does is basically it checks for the direction of the normal of each face or the normal map sometimes and if it's pointing towards a specific direction it will make it white and if not it will make it black so you can see that here that everything that's more or less now pointing up is white and everything that's pointing down is black. I want it inverse, so I will just make like that and I will just adjust it to my liking, something like this. Because what I would like to do now, as you can see here, is that uh, everything is now pretty much white, and because I now added a lot of layers. I'm actually now going to take away from some of them. So I'm going to uh, let's add some directional noise maybe. I don't know, maybe not. Let's see what we have here. Um, there's a dirt map right here that we can use. So fill. I'm just going to multiply that. Work on the levels for it again. So something like, like that. And of course, it's very strong now, but as again, once again, I just want to show you how it works. Um, I'm usually suggesting in these kind of uh, instances, when you want to make your own maps, that you just add bit by bit and take away bit by bit. So don't just use like two or three maps, add them onto each other, and you will receive a much, much better result in the end. One thing that I also suggest is changing over the projection. So currently we're using um, UV projection. Which basically if you go into a UV you see it projects just simple as a simple texture. If I go over to Triplanar, what it does is it actually projects the texture in 3D space. So we can actually manipulate the texture in 3D space which is quite handy can even rotate the texture if you want and scale it. So with like W, E and R, you can scale the textures as you want them. You can even click here, so it generates some random seats, or at least it should do on most textures. I don't know why it's not doing it for this one, but it will probably do it for this one. If I click it, see it generates it randomly. So a bit more of this. So we'll just do it a bit more. So something like that. <coughs> Multiply this and I want to linear dodge this. And uh maybe let's do something like this. So that is quite very white with the M inclusion. Let's do something like this. All right, so now you could say, oh, well, I like the result because you can always export into, uh, yeah, into giants and check the PNGs. So if you want to export, you just open the export window and you have your uh, export output template here. So you should find all of these now in your uh, in the zip file and you would most probably need either vehicle or vehicle spec, which is just for the diffuse, uh, for the specular map. All right, so another nifty trick is sometimes you want 
this kind of uh, dirt across all your UV sets, for example. If you make a cultivator or something, uh, you can press right click and you can instantiate that across the other texture sets, which will basically copy and paste it and you will see the results in everything. So on every texture set. You can actually see that's quite a lot here, but we will come to that in a bit. What I also like to do usually is uh, I, especially for wear, uh, for dirt, because it doesn't ma make a lot of sense that a lot of this dirt is here. Maybe if the tractor is throwing a lot of mud, uh, you can put some dirt on the front face, but usually there's not a lot on top or even inside. So you can actually delete that with another generator, which is called position which takes the um yeah very much basically the um world position of that model into consideration so if i just do this you can see that it's already getting black and white and it just allows me to um remove some of the dirt that i don't need so instead of position uh, instead of normal, I will put it to multiply and invert. And you can see that on top here, the dirt is actually gone. You can quite nicely control your whole dirt with it. It's a bit finicky if you want to get the best results. So you have to kind of play with it a bit. But you can get some really nice stuff. So I want another M in occlusion is not that strong so I can just make like this just some dirt in the top parts as, as you can see here everything that I'm adding or that I'm removing is actually also in the other UV set because the VO2 is not something I'm controlling right now and this is basically my the base um, dirt that I have and now I'm just gonna add a couple of sprinkles uh, base dirt sorry so I'm just gonna look for some small dirt splotches uh, there's a couple ones that you can use so these shavings are usually pretty good just make them tri -planar again scale them down and you can just play around with size and balance to get something like so something like this, and maybe something called, uh, I think it's called dirt something. Yeah, there is dirt 02, so we just add that too. It's a little bit smaller, something like that. And there we have it. That's our basic, uh, yeah, almond or dirt. So, you can now export this and actually look at this in uh, Giants. But I want to show you uh, actually adding the wear on top of it. Because there's something to keep in mind when uh, actually doing the wear. Because there's a um, couple of things that you probably should uh, be aware of when doing it. Right, so it's my base dirt. All right, so when adding the where, what I tend to do is two things. First of all, I don't like wear on metal parts that are blank metal because for me that's just nonsense, right? The second thing is I like my uh, wear to actually delete the information of the dirt. And you can do that quite well in Substance Painter. So I'm first of all going to add two folders. One I'm just calling wear. The second one I just call wear mask. And inside, I'll just very quickly make a material, which is 100% metal. 
and has a bit of roughness to it. And now comes the trick, actually. You leave wear at 1, but leave dirt enabled and put dirt to 0. So what this does is, as you can see here, actually, it changes the dirt because it's the dirt channel. So wherever I now display where, let me just show you very quickly. Just gonna put black mask on this and paint. So if I paint over this, for example, you can see that there is no wear anymore because the, uh, no dirt anymore, because the wear layer is actually deleting the dirt, which is quite handy. For example, if you make a cultivator and the tines or you have a disc blade, um, and you don't want any dirt on your tines or discs, you can use this way to actually get rid of that uh, dirt on those parts. Right, so to just very quickly remove the mask again. And now I will actually go through my model and everything that is um, metal, I will put in here as not being able to show the wear. And I'm doing this by simply adding a white mask. I will just make this some kind of weird color that I can find very quickly. And then I'll just go through and with the polygon fill tool, which is the shortcut for, I will just go through everything that is not supposed to get wear on it. So it might be helpful to just do some switcheroos if you're not, if you don't really know what pieces should be should get wear or not. So it's a bit of a, of a trick to get this working. Should also not get wear. So this is rubber. This is rubber. This rubber, metal, metal. This, of course, the whole breaking ordeal. That is all metal as well. Plastic, it's metal. It is metal as well. Then uh, this is metal, rubber, metal. And I could just go on and on and on. But I will spare the rest for you in a second. Because this is basically now how you can mask this. For purposes, let's leave it like this. All right, so let's make this whitish again. There we go. And now we do the same again on this one. For where, uh, basically, I really like to use just very subtle wear on parts that aren't usually like that, which don't experience heavy wear, like trailers and most of the trailer parts. So I'm usually starting by, um, for example, a fill layer and just some, oh, we could use the shavings again, because I think it uh, would be quite a nice sample of what I want to show. Just do this, this, then maybe it's add a bit strong and don't be afraid, it looks kind of iffy, but my thinking behind it is that I'm now going to add a generator called Curvature, which uses the Curvature map or mask. And uh, I will simply increase a couple of values, so something like this. And I will put this to multiply. And now I have a very nice mask that I can use to simply start off with the first couple of bits and pieces um, and it's the same way as we just did before so bit by bit you build up your um, wear mask there is actually 
um one smart mask that is quite well when it comes to wear um and i think it is called also something called edge wear i think metal edge wear um I th i'm not quite sure if it's the one that is in here there's one in here or if it's one in these ones i'm remembering but we could just try it out i guess I don't seem to find it, but okay, we can use this and then adjust this one to our likings. So once again, we just get down a bit and actually, I think I don't, I'm not, I don't think it's this one. I'm not quite sure which one it is. What's it called? This one? Edge damage? Maybe? Maybe it was this one, because this is mask editor. I think it was this one, so edge damage. Because uh, what's important on this one is the curvature here. So you can actually work with the curvature a lot better on this one. So let's go into the mask again. And we can just work with this one. So if you just want a tiny bit of damage, this one, see the first texture on this one is actually just being multiplied on top of that. And I think the second one is the one that actually gives you the, um, oops, the dodge. Uh, the first one is actually the one that um, gives you the actual edge wear. So I just bump up the scale slightly. So I'm actually preferring something very small like this already because it it's not a lot overburdened. It's not very strong. And it's in a couple of places where you could say, eh, that could have wear. So just do the same here as in the other one. So I'm actually going to add the ambient occlusion on this one here as well, but I will multiply it out because I don't want any edge damage in places where there's ambient occlusion. So we can already see that there's a quite a few places where the ambient occlusion is actually already canceling out some parts. Um, of course, you can tweak this to your liking. So something like this should be fine. And then we'll just add once again some tiny details. So let's go to the textures. And maybe let's add, uh, oh, that's the wrong one. This is going to be just fine. You can just maybe use some levels and then adjust your levels, get some of the details out on them too. All right, and once again, we can use this base wear if we like it a lot. Uh, we can just uh, instantiate that across a texture layer, just to the other one. And here we can, on the second one, we can put it in its own um, folder and actually mask it out. So let's call this baseware. And I could now set a white mask. 
now say, oh, I don't really like the way here, so I will just paint it out. I'm actually not liking the big pieces, so I'm just going to go into this. The dirt too, instead of the shavings, uh, instead of that dirt specks black. Just gonna dial back on the balance on this one. All right. So there's a couple of tricks that uh, I can show you, and I want to show you when it comes to using substance painter to your advantage. This kind of procedural texturing is one. And the other one is the masking, because the masking is so powerful and it's so underused by a lot of people that it is indeed a shame. So I will just move this very quickly here, make a white mask. I will just remove these from that dirt map. Ignore this. This doesn't really matter. This is because they are not mirrored. Forgot to do that, but they should be the ones on this side. So let's say I want some very special wear inside of the um, trailer. And I could, of course, go in and paint it all out by hand, and it would be very tedious and also quite annoying to do. So what you can do is actually use Substance Painter's abilities to mask to your advantage. So let's call this Aware Trailer Inside. Just put another folder in this because the double foldering allows you to have enough, uh, an extra layer in between. I'm just going to use this and I'm going to add a black mask to it. Then I add paint. And now with the uh, polygon fill selected, I only want to paint on this UV. So I have UV chunk fill here to paint on this, this, and let's say I want to paint on these bad boys as well. Oh, maybe not this one. All right, so everything I do now is basically inside of this one here. So now I want to use Substance Painter's masking abilities. So let's do this. Once again, I leave my wear at one and my dirt to zero. So I'm actually removing dirt while I'm making the wear. And now I'm going to add black mask and a paint layer. So in this paint layer, I could now go in and basically um, paint everything my wear in by hand, which is super tedious and wouldn't look great. But think about how a trailer works. You have stuff in here, and if you just tip the trailer, everything comes out this side, right? So everything also moves this side. So what I like to do is I would like to add some lines because it gives some direction to the wear. And you can make this so nice in Substance Painter that it's a shame that it's overlooked. So let's look for the so-called anisotropic lines. We need a fill layer. So it's these bad boys. Once again, I have to make them triplanar. Rotate them around so they fit. And then we'll just play around with the settings as we would like it. So, okay, once again. And then maybe some more contrast. And a bit less balance or something like this. And now, instead of just leaving it like this, I'm actually setting this to multiply. And the lines will disappear. Why is that? because everything that's beneath is also black because we have not put anything in our paint layer. So now I will add another layer on top, um, which I'm just going to do maybe some directional noise. I haven't done that yet, so I want to test it out how it looks. Once again, 
trade planer or if you want to be quicker you can also simply control d this one and just change it out because the settings will be kept if you duplicate stuff so this goes to multiply as well and now in the bottom paint layer we can very very simply just select a brush get some white color going and just as you can see paint the wear in that we want because these two will very simply just add whatever we paint in here they will just multiply which means they will take out information and thus make themselves visible so it's just going maybe let's add a bit more contrast here and maybe do this and then let's just go all right so something like that and it will give you a very very nice directional wear mask of course whenever you do this you really have to um export into giants and take a look how your um, maps look especially if you need to convert them into dds because the compression of pngs into dds will produce some artifacts and of course the shaders from giants aren't the greatest when it comes to wear and dirt and they will also uh, play around a bit with your maps and make them probably look a bit chunkier and a bit more opaque so i would suggest make them a little less opaque so something like this would already be uh, quite good all right and with this you can actually make so many cool things not just a wear map like this but also dirt maps you can make flow maps um, for example let's say i want some leaking dirt somewhere which is pretty damn cool for um yeah i don't know for like a, a slurry tanker right so you basically just make the same uh as we just went about so you have black mask you fill this with some direction let's do directional dirt we had some nice one let's take this one so this one set this one to multiply and add the paint i can drag and drop this and then you can just very gently paint in whatever you want to have with the f the levels you can really make some nice leakage going on so this is just leaking down there you go so all those things are basically very good tools um there's still a lot i could talk about but i'm already waffling on since 30 minutes so i just want to show you what my final version looked like um and i will be right back because i can't click that all right so this is the final version of well more or less final i still have to of course check in game later on and when it's converted um but this is basically the version that i came up with if we go through the channels you can see that the wear is just very 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 slightly on it um it will look a lot lot more worn in giants later on and the dirt map of course as well it's just very slightly it's not very uh, opaque so it's still a lot of gray colors and yeah so i'm in occlusion and it looks like this we switch over to the giants editor so you can see that what i meant with the dirt these parts that it's like they will put a levels on it because this is how their smooth step uh, shader works um 
course, once again, this is not final. I still have to add some stuff and get rid of these because these look way too artificial. But if we go in, I think this kind of wear already looks pretty decent for this trailer. Um, I hope it looks as good when it is in-game, <clears throat> but we will see afterwards. So I hope that you learned something today and that um, you're not as afraid of making wear maps as you have been before watching this video. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.